Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And we are so excited about each and every one of you in your respective places. Listen, I am excited because you are a part of our ministry family and we would love to stay connected with you. There are countless ways in which you can tune in into the balance of life via iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Reason.fm, and Radio Line, as well as a whole host of other platforms. You can always email us and we can send you a couple of links so that you can stay in tune with the balance of life. Our email address is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Today, we're going to talk about something, and listen, this is a very, very, uh, I want to say, transparent moment, and I am quite sure that you yourself have found yourself in this place. Your routine has become detectable. That's right. I woke up feeling like that. On Tuesdays, it is our normal day of intercessory prayer, but today... I felt like my routine has become detectable. And so whenever I feel like that, I know that it is time for a spiritual shift. That's right. Whenever your routine becomes detectable, the enemy now knows, he knows what you're going to do. He knows that, and I can always use myself as an example when I get up and I start stirring, I may not get up out of the bed, but about six o'clock in the morning, my time of intercessory prayer begins. I go into consecration and then I ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me on what we're going to pray about for that day. We have been doing this for over a year and I want to say two years. First, we did intercessory prayer, I believe it was for an hour or two on Tuesdays. After a year, we extended it to the entire day of intercessory prayer. So now, as I said, we're looking at two years, Tuesday's intercessory prayer. My routine has become detectable for the enemy. So it's time for a shift. And I'm going to pray. I encourage you to pray. Whenever your routine becomes detectable, to the enemy. It is time for a shift. Pray and ask God to release instructions to the Holy Spirit to release unto you about what changes you need to make. We cannot afford to allow the enemy to become familiar with our spiritual life. No, we can't. I want to share something with you in the Word of God and whenever I get to this place spiritually I go to this passage of Scripture and it is found over in 2nd Kings the 6th chapter and the 8th verse I'm also reminded about another passage of Scripture that I pray we have time to share with you on today over in 2nd Kings 6th chapter And beginning at the 8th verse, it reads as follows. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Now we have uh, king of Syria and the king of Israel there in war. But the king of Syria had studied the path of the king of Israel. Anytime, and I know this of sports, I know this of politics. The name of the game is to study your opponent. And I'm not talking about some previous strategies. I'm talking about the history of your 
competition. You study the history of your competition so that you will know how they move. And then when you learn how they move, then you'll know how to move. It is the same way in the spiritual realm. When the enemy becomes so familiar with how we move about, how we do things, then he has studied us. And he knows how we're going to move, when we're going to move, how we're going to pray, when we're going to pray, how we're going to study. He has become familiar with the history of our schedules, with the history of our time in the presence of the Lord, uh, whether it is through prayer or consecration, studying the word of God. The enemy studies how you maneuver. And once he has gained some insight that you are predictable on how you study, how you pray, how you get in the presence of the Lord, when he becomes so familiar with your game plan, then he knows how to come against you. Why? Because he already knows what you're going to do. You have not changed a bit. You're still spending the same five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in prayer. Same quick prayer of consecration. No songs of Zion. Only picking up the word when it's time for services. No in-depth time in the presence of the Lord. Not really asking for directions from God. Not asking the Holy Spirit to release the will of God for your life. No inviting the Holy Spirit into what you are doing. And so the enemy knows that about you and I. He has familiarized himself with us. We have become predictable to him. Warning comes before destruction. And I believe that what I am feeling in my spirit today, I'm not the only one. You could be experiencing the same thing as well. We have things that we do every day. But then when it comes to the things of God, we should not be predictable. We should not become stagnant. Where is the growth? If I am doing the same things that I did six months ago, as far as getting in the presence of the Lord, seeking his face, if I am doing it the same way, I haven't grown. So I pray that this is helping all of us because it is so uncomfortable and I don't like the way that I feel today. I do not like to feel like my 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 routine has become detectable so I feel it's time for me to shift so second king six and let's start at the ninth verse it says and the man of God sent unto the king of Israel saying beware that thou pass not such a place for thither the Syrians are come down and the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Now here is the most beautiful thing. Not only, not only should we not become detectable by the enemy, but God will also send a warning through the Holy Spirit that we don't fall into a trap. The king of Syria laid out his plans because he had studied his opponent, the king of Israel. And so by the king of Syria laying out his plans, he already knew what route the king of Israel was going to take. And so he, he laid traps in those areas because he had studied his opponent. What I'm saying to you today, the enemy is studying you. Why? Because we're the, we're the opponent. We're not on his side. We're on God's side. And so he is studying us to find out 
what snare he can set for us, how he can trap us up, how he could, uh, you know, get us into predicaments into, and into situations to catch us off guard. That is what he is doing. But I come by to tell you today, I came by to encourage you today to shift. It is time for a shift. Do not allow your routine de to become detectable. You ever heard the saying uh, from someone who says, I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to say that. I had a feeling that that's what you were going to do. Why? Because they have studied you, they know you, and you have become predictable. You have become detectable. Let's go further in the word. And if you are just tuning in, you're tuning in to the balance of life. I thank you so very much for joining us today. Hey, be sure to check out our social media page via Facebook, The Balance of Life. You can like and share. We try and get in there and, and share things with you. We do have a, a, a couple of things on the table. I'm so excited. Uh, this month, we're going to release the Keys of Promises. The Keys of Promises is part two of the promises of God, the components of the Old and New Testament. In the, Kings, the Keys of Promise, it is filled with scripture where we were instructed by the Holy Spirit to take a look at the keys and the results scripture tells us behold I have given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and so what we have been led to do is to dive into scripture to take a look at areas keys of obedience keys of knowledge keys of understanding the request of Jabast asked for and given keys of understanding and skill which are found over in the book of Daniel we have highlighted in different passages of Scripture the keys and the results second Chronicles 714 is one of our areas the key if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways those are the keys the results then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land so those are some of the scripture texts that you will find in the keys of promise soon to be released for this month of February so excited about that all right let's get back to the Word of God we're taking a look at 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. It's time to shift. I literally felt in my spirit this morning, yikes. My routine has become detectable. So it's time for a shift. When we have found ourselves to do the exact same thing spiritually over a period of time, yes, the enemy has studied you because you are, we are, opponents to the enemy he's our opponent because we're not on the same side we're on the side of our father which is in heaven we're on the side of righteousness and he is on the side of unrighteousness and so you have opponents we are opponents we have nothing in common but the truth of the matter is is your opponent studies the history of how you maneuver and that is how he comes against you to attack he knows your weak areas he knows your strong areas he already knows he already knows if you're only gonna go so far into prayer if you're gonna go so far into intercessory prayer if you're gonna go so far into reading the word if you're going to ask the Holy Spirit to release a revelation of a word and then just because you get a revelation of the word he already knows if you're gonna do something with it he has studied you the opponent so here 
the Lord our God sent the prophet to warn the man of God, to warn the king of Israel to change his route. You know, there are certain areas of scripture that I always go back to when I am in a certain place. When I really need to study, I am always, always, and this is for me personally, I always go back to study the prophet Jeremiah. And it is scripture such as this over in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, beginning at the 8th verse, that when I feel that predictability in what I do and how I maneuver for the kingdom of heaven, when I feel that, I'm led back to this passage of scripture. And each time I go, the Holy Spirit reveals something new to me. Verse 10 says, And the king of Syria sent to the place which the man of God told him. So, not only did the prophet warn the king of Israel to change his route, he also gave him instructions on where to go. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that just like our Father which is in heaven? That he will do more than just issue the warning. He will give further instructions. Let me read that again. I'm going to back up to the ninth verse. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him. And warned him of and saved him there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet, that is in Israel. Telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bed chamber. Verse 13 says, And he said, Go and spy where he is, <laughs> that I may send and fetch him. And it sh was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dotham. So, now the enemy has shifted to focus on the prophet. That's right. That's right. For those who carry the mantle of the prophet, whenever you are obedient, I feel a shift in my spirit. Whenever you are obedient and you warn the people, when you do what God tells you to do and you, 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 you send out the prophetic word that you're supposed to send out, the enemy then focuses on you. He wants to now study you to find out where you are. That's right. It's saying it right here in scripture. So, yes, the king of Syria, he was upset because he could not trap the king of Israel and his army. And he wanted to know why. For those who have accepted the word given through the prophet and you follow the instructions to God be the glory. But now I must shift and I must talk to those who walk in the mantleship of the prophetic. The enemy is now watching you. The enemy is now paying attention to you. It says it right here. And he said, go and spy where he is. So his focus has shifted. From warring against the king of Israel because he couldn't trap him. There was deliverance done there. And so you, man or woman of God, you have given the instructions to, to, to the body of Christ, to whomever you had to give instructions to, 
to escape the snares of the enemy. You gave some instructions that brought forth deliverance. You gave some instructions that brought forth a breakthrough. You gave as you were instructed to gave, to give. You did what you were instructed to do. And now the enemy is watching you. I'm going to read that again. And he said, go and spy where he is. So let me back up to the 11th verse. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for the thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, will you not show me which it which of us is for the king of Israel. He could not figure out why he could not trap the king of Israel. And it is because of the prophet. He was obedient. If we go back to verse 9, and the man of God sent unto the king of Syria, king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for neither the Syrians are come down. So, the prophet Elisha was instructed to give warning. Man or woman of God, prophet, I'm talking to the prophet. I'm talking to the prophet. You have been obedient. You have uh, given the instructions. And now you are the subject of study from the enemy. And you know what, whenever I get, it seems that I, 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 the Holy Spirit gives me a revelation of something and I'm on the air. And uh, I don't know if you can hear the pages turning, but uh, we, we have to write this down. So the prophet, you have become the focus of the enemy. To study where you are so that he can set a trap for you. Because you were obedient. Mm, isn't that good? If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life, and I am Pastor Angel Ferguson. I thank you for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our subject today is yikes. <laughs> That's right, yikes. My routine has become detectable. It is time for a shift and we are sharing with you over in second kings the sixth chapter beginning at the eighth verse i always pivot back to this scripture text whenever i feel like it's time for a shift and the shift is coming in the spiritual realm it is time for a shift and so as we are going over this passage of scripture the holy spirit is giving me uh some downloads some revelation of this word and i am the first partaker yes it is true the enemy studies the believers of christ the obedient of christ he studies his opponent we are his opponent because we are on two different sides. We are on God's side, the side of righteousness, and the enemy is on the side of unrighteousness. And so he studies his opponent to find out how he may set a snare and a trap for the believers, the obedient of our Father which is in heaven. We should study him as well. That's right. Don't get all caught up that you're not paying attention to the enemy. Do not get all caught up where you do not pay attention to when the distractions come. When the attacks come. They come in seasons. They come at different intervals of your life. When you are at the brink of a, of a breakthrough. 
the enemy is going to do everything in, in, in his will and in his power to stagnate and to block that breakthrough or to get you to turn around, to, to get you to disown your faith. Because he has studied his opponent and he, he, he already knows just how much you can take. He knows your breaking point. But it is time for us to shift. It is time for us to grow unto spiritual maturity. It is time to grow in our faith. True, it takes the, 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 the grain of a mustard seed. But you know a mustard seed multiplies and grows. It may be one of the smallest seeds. But it is abundant. When it grows unto maturity and it's time for the harvest a seed produces more than what is planted so if I plant just these small seeds imagine what it's going to produce so grow in your faith trust God don't give up so easily don't throw in the towel so quickly. Don't forget that God has already delivered and, and you've seen miracle signs and wonders happen before. Don't forget he's been a provider. Don't, don't forget he's been a protector. Don't forget what he's already placed in you. There is more. It just has to be discovered, nurtured, and, and cultivated. And at the appointed time, utilized. But don't forget. But I'm talking now to our prophets. Because you have found yourself faithful and obedient. And you have delivered a word that you were supposed to deliver, whether it was a warning, uh, whether it was concerning a vision, uh, healing, uh, coming into the knowledge of Christ, uh, foretelling, uh, present, tell, whatever you did, whatever you did that you were instructed by the Holy Spirit and you found yourself to be obedient and you did not deter from the instructions given unto you by the Holy Spirit. The instructions came from God released to the Holy Spirit and then it was given unto you and you gave the word that you were supposed to give. And that individual or that corporate place not only did you give the instructions but they followed the instructions and they were delivered they were set free they were healed the, the, the chains of bondage were broken and destroyed in their life demonic spirits were, were, were broken and removed from their life they are renewed in their mind they are converted the word that you gave brought back conviction that they reconciled themselves back to a right relationship with the father they were compelled by the drawing of the holy spirit through the word that you were released to give and i have to say this to you that now the enemy is watching you it says it right here it says and he said go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him and it was told him saying behold he is in Dotham so the enemy sent out his spies this is where we cannot become predictable we cannot become detectable it's time for a shift I'm not telling you to run and go and hide somewhere and, and get in a corner and tremble. Uh-uh. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying get further into the presence of the Lord. I'm saying that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I'm saying to you, 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Come on. What does he do? He prepares a table before me. In the presence of mine enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I got to go back to that again. And he said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dotham. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. So they thought that they had the man of God because they found out where he was, and they thought they had him. They thought his guard was down. They thought that he was only focusing on giving a word to the king of Israel and so the enemy thought he had him oh but when there is a worship and there is a praise deep down in your belly when there is a furtherance of the presence of the Lord that you are trying to get to and that you actually make it in when your time of study and your obedience heightens when your spiritual eyes are sharpened as an eagle and your hearing is fine-tuned that you begin to hear in clarity and you give the word in authority and power as given unto you that you find yourself obedient to the things of God as the mantle of a prophet you are the voice utilized upon the earth that you share when you are instructed to share that you intercede when you are instructed to intercede that you are covering a district in the spiritual realm that you are a prophet unto the nations that you are covered where you are assigned to and you show up for your assignments you have clarity of your assignments you deliver your assignments you stay until the end you do not leave prematurely but you know why you were called. You know why you were sent. And although it may be rough, although at times it may be very lonely, you've stayed. And the enemy thought that he knew you. <laughs> he thought he knew you. He thought he had you down pat. He really did. But here's the secret. When the opponent does not realize that they're being studied, they won't change a thing. But the game plan in the room is to know that you're being studied. The game plan in the room behind closed doors is to change and to shift. Because you already know that your opponent is expecting you to do the same thing. You ever wanted to say something but held your peace anyway? Because the predictability of you was to speak your mind. But when you shift, instead of speaking your mind, you hold your peace. Instead of being angry, you pray for a solution and ask God to, to, to show you how to work it out. Instead of shouting anything abusive, you turn to the Word of God. You let the Lord fight your battle. You come to the reality that, you know what? This right here is going to turn around for my good because I love the Lord. Because I am called according to his purpose. And if I would just hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle, ask him to release instructions for me on how to deal with this and how to deal with that. I may not know how to do the paperwork, but God does. 
the Holy Spirit can give me some instructions and all I have to do is sit and wait on the instructions you might have gone around and asked several people for help and they might have said you know what I'm gonna help you I'm gonna I'm going to uh, give you some instructions and, and, and I'm gonna be there for you but when you got ready to call them they were busy and and they just didn't have time and and then after the third or fourth time you finally realized that they were just giving you the brush off they didn't really mean what they said don't fret don't worry about it guess what everything that you need God will provide sometimes you just have to sit and wait on the Holy Spirit so get the paperwork in your hands sit it in front of you sit it at your desk and wait on the Holy Spirit to show you how to fill it out if that's what you have to do because some things God doesn't want anybody to get the glory about what he's going to do in your life he doesn't want anybody to get the glory about that breakthrough about that business that's being birthed about that book that's about to be written uh, about that ministry that is strengthening and expanding sometimes he doesn't want anybody to get the to get the glory God wants all the glory and sometimes he will put you in a place that man does not have a hand in it at all it's you and the Trinity and people will sit back and wonder how you made it over well how does she do that and they will actually wonder who helped her and the very one that you asked for help they may say well they did call me but they'll have to admit I didn't help them the enemy will try to stagnate you and he does not care in which avenue he does it so hold tight don't throw in the towel it's time for a shift wait on the plans of the Lord now let me say this right here when I say wait on the plans of the Lord don't just sit and 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 say don't don't even ask him what the plans are you know sometimes people just sit and say I'm just waiting on the Lord to come and tell me what to do well did you ask him what it is he wanted you to do or are you waiting for this beautiful uh, I like royal blue uh, ball to come drop in your lap to say woo-ha this is what I want you to do <laughs> it doesn't happen like that ask what are your plans for me what are your instructions for me and wait for an answer because as surely as you ask an answer is on the way but I am engulfed by this passage of scripture because here I can see the shift of the focus from the one that he was fighting to the prophet the one who delivered the message and he thought he had him he thought he was in a relaxed area he thought that you know what I'm, I'm gonna go I know where he is I've spied him out he's gone to bed um, the, you know everybody that's around him they, they all sleep they laying down um, they're not focused and so he thought he had the man of God and they encamped all around them because they came by night and they came around the city verse 15 says and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth behold a host in camp compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we live and so those who were the, the servant who was walking with the prophet he did not realize who he was walking with his faith wasn't at the same level as the prophet <laughs> sometimes the prophet will walk with others and their faith isn't at the same level it happens but we all have to grow into spiritual maturity it's a growing process verse 16 says and he answered fear not 
for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Elisha knew who was on his side. He knew he had been obedient unto God. He knew who sent him. He knew that as he did what he was instructed to do, that God was going to protect him. That God was on his side. And his faith demonstrated it through his words. Fear not. He told the servant, don't be scared. Don't be scared. I know what it looks like. I know it looks like it's more with them. I know. But that's just looking at it in the physical sense. The things of the carnal cannot understand the things of the spirit. And so, yes, they might have shown up in the physical. But my hope is in spiritual things. I rely on who sent me, which is my father in heaven. Verse 17 says that an Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Let, let me say this right here. This is something else that just hit my spirit. When Elisha prayed, he prayed for the servant's eyes to be open. He did not pray, defeat my enemy. He already knew of the spiritual warriors that was around him. He just asked that the Lord open the eyes of the servant. That is faith. That the, he already knew that the Lord was going to fight his battle. That they that 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 those who were around him were already they were ready. They were ready for battle. The angels of the Lord that are encamped around you, they are already ready for battle. I pray that your eyes are open so that you can see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about who the man of God, because this man of God was sent out on an assignment and he fulfilled it. And so the host of warriors fighting on his behalf, they were there. They were already there. Those worrying on your behalf, they are already there. I pray that your eyes are open so that you can see that it is more on your side than on the side of the enemy. Though a, a host should encamp around against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand shall fall at thy right side it shall not come nigh thy dwelling only with thine eyes shall, shall thou see and behold the reward of the wicked only then verse 18 says and when they came down to him Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said smite this people I pray thee with blindness and he smote them with blindness according to the word of the Lord and so God honored his prayer. God honored his prayer. God will honor your prayer as well. I know he will. I believe he will. So be encouraged today. It's time for a shift. It is time for a shift. It is time to move like never before. I pray that what we have shared with you has been food unto your soul and a light unto your path. I pray for you every day. Have a blessed day, everyone.